Well, hello again. Welcome back to another edition of the Forex Weekly Podcast. My name is Alexander Nikitin, of course. And if you are new to this series, you may ask a question. What the heck these guys are doing here? And the answer is that we are looking for some good opportunities that may happen or may not happen in the next week. So, also we have a little bit of educational stuff here. So when you finish watching this video, you walk away with a little bit of knowledge. And last time we were discussing swing identification technique. And I told you that next time we will be discussing the relationships between swings. And the next time came and we will discuss the relationships between swings today. And I named this video trend identification technique. Oh, again, just forgot. I need to put some uh, disc disclaimer here. So, although all these ideas are high probability trade setups, they are not guaranteed. So, if you, are will, if you will try to trade them, you should remember that you may lose money as well as you may win money. It is not a guarantee. You do need on your own risk. Yes. Uh, just a disclaimer for those who will uh, follow these ideas in his uh, trading decisions. Okay, let me have some empty space on my chart to illustrate you first what my thoughts are. After we have identified swings, for example, this way, we have some kind of this picture. Boom, 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 boom. This. We need to find whether we have a trend or not find out. So, to do this, we need to have some technique. Technique. And my trend identification technique is uh, is uh, looking at the impulse ranges. To look at the impulse range, I am using a rectangle tool and I do it this way. I draw a range of an impulse. You see, from the highest high to the lowest low, this is the range. And whatever price action takes place within this range is called a correction until the range is violated. You see, for example, if it was this way, it was still a correction. Correction, correction, correction. Nothing. Just correction. Okay. After that uh, border is violated, we are looking for the first opposite swing. The first opposite swing started that means that we have a lower low ended. Uh, for example, this was a low and this was a lower low. So to identify the trend, I need the highest point between these lows. And the highest point is here. You see it here. So my next step is to connect the low with the highest high and the highest high with the next low and all other swings should be deleted boom 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 and boom so if you will try to trade these setups you will draw your patterns this way something like that but not this way not this way understood okay hope you understood that so this is very simple. You need to do it this, this, and this. Uh, let's analyze second one. Let me delete this rectangle also. Okay. <coughs> Just to see where this law was violated. This law was violated here. Yes. So all the price action above this horizontal line is called correction and we need the first opposite swing after that the lows was violated. The first opposite swing is here. The highest point between them is here. So this is the highest point. So that means that movement was like that and to the downside. So need to delete the rest. Need to delete the rest. Boom, 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 boom. So the picture becomes very clear to the downside, to the upside, to the downside, and so on. These zigzagging movements 
are no trends that are not trends uh, they will be trends in only a special particular situation when the impulse is very large and uh, I will tell you some rule of having that uh, movement uh, turn into a trend having that movement be turned into a trend although it doesn't violate the previous impulse range but right now it's not the topic of today's discussion so we are identifying trends this way let me delete all this stuff and we will jump right into the middle of the charts into that real time oh, not real time because the markets are closed but just in the <coughs> in the markets <laughs> let me put it this way okay you see it here yes you see the swings here here and here according to my swing identification technique it is here oh sorry here you see the swing here like that like that yes you see that something like that like that so what you need to do you need to skip some of them okay boom 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 something like this you need to choose what of them are major swings and what of them are just noise and uh, let us see it using the rectangle tools okay sorry magnet mode should be deleted see the see it the movement here should be one impulse let me delete the other stuff oh no really sorry not one impulse but one movement one corrective swings so this is the initial point because it is the lowest point between the highs high 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 low should be the lowest point okay this should be deleted 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 like that trend line of course this is the first uh, point where the opposite swing started so this is the highest high and the movement from between these highs starting from the lowest low between them is a single movement boom 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 so now you can see major legs of the trend without those nose without it this this and this of course is deleted because all that stuff takes place within the previous impulse range yes and you should mark it with a single line okay and this is a pure correction and I will delete these movements 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and 5 and will draw this impulse this way but the reason is not that they are taking place within the previous impulse range but because these movements are relatively small to be a correction and uh, how to know if this movement is small or not small relatively as compared to previous correction I will uh, tell you in my next videos uh, but just right now you should uh, believe me that this movement is small okay after we have drawn some impulses and corrections we need one impulse to take as I say a leg something like that okay if you if you want I, I would do it this way uh, in my early videos I showed you the overlapping zone as I call the active zone so it reflects my uh, views it reflects my ideas <coughs> you see this zone it is the range of the previous impulse and the range of the current impulse so the zone where these ranges overlap 
if you look left it is exactly the zone of previous correction so this zone is called an active zone somewhere within this zone the movement will start it may start out of the border as soon as it touches the border it may start somewhere in the middle of that or somewhere uh, more to this uh, lower border but what we don't need we don't need this movement touch the lowest border or exceed that so the idea is that somewhere within this zone we'll have a movement sorry I deleted that range okay we don't need it I, I, I hope you keep it in mind and what is the idea for the next week uh, I will take magnet mode and I will draw a pattern this way boom 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 456 is okay for my B point in Gatli pattern C point is also okay 70 something percent of A to B and D point should be 786 it is exactly here if I draw my fibs and place them this way from here to here you will see my stop loss is here my target is all the way here but in my trading room with my students I highly recommend them to master first this target first I tell my student to master these targets and acquire some consistency trading that because this target is uh, more likely to happen than these targets so ju just an example this is uh, this target is hit at about 50% of the time so you have in this loser next time you have this winner next time you have loser or maybe you have two losers two winners or maybe you have three losers two winners so but you know it is 50 to 50% probability but this target is only hit less it is only hit 35 to 40 percent of the time so it means you have loser 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 and only one winner and then again you have loser 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 and only one winner it is very difficult psychologically but this higher target brings you more pips brings you more profit than this lower target okay hope you understand this the accuracy of the first target is much better than the accuracy of the second target but the second target brings you more pips so it is up to you if you can stand uh, those periods of losing 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 and losing again so you can aim to the extended target if you want more accuracy you'd better want more winners than losers then you should take the smaller target but uh, the m amount of money will be generated a bit less and your equity curve will not be as volatile as the equity curve if you are aiming the uh, extended target okay ho this is all for today oh just just one thing just one thing i had multiple requests uh, asking me why do i place the target at this x level just an explanation that I place this target at this next level because we have a 77% probability of price after it hit this level to go at least 180R average true range further before it goes to 786 understand this? Uh, to show you what is 80R let me enable this level mm, 113 ATI usually coincides with 113 average through range usually coincides with 113 so placing your stop loss somewhere here is uh, no use you have 77% probability of price to hit this you either should place it somewhere here but in this case your risk to reward will be not as good or you should place it here in this case this is good the risk to reward is good because you are risking one dollar in your attempts to generate two dollars risk to reward is one versus two 
hope you understand this why I do that so no need to place no 10 pips above below X no nothing below X no one ATI below X no one spread below X no one 13 extension below X no 127 extension below X no something below X exactly X because there is 77% probability that all these levels will be hit so in each and every case you are risking more than needed okay and now that is all yes watch my previous videos if you do not understand how to use win identification technique uh, hope you find some links uh, appearing on the chat subscribe to my videos give me some likes if you like this idea and uh, I hope to see you next week we will discuss some more interesting things okay See you next time and goodbye.